Colonel. You call him Colonel? Uh-huh. You yeah, don't call, call him Granddad or Grandpa? Or... No, we just call him Colonel. Can I put my hand on his knee? Is that oh, all right? Sure. Okay. It's a power move. Oh, it is? If it's okay with him. <laughs> it's okay with him. It's a power move, really? An Army colonel knows a thing or two about power. Colonel Gary Steele has a powerful story. The Corps of Cadets parades on the field before the game of the year, the clash against Navy. At Army football games in the 1960s, it truly was a whiteout. Every single one of them is a 12th man for the team. My dad and my godfather were stationed at West Point in 1942. All black unit. What their job was, it was to train the horses and then to take them down to where the cadets rode. For them to move around the academy and to, there's nobody that looks like them at all. For them to be in the stands, September 1966, the first game that was starting at tight end, for those two Buffalo soldiers, that was a special moment. Starting the first, I just can't imagine what their feelings were. He was the first black football player at West Point. Dad is so humble, he would never talk about it. We'd ask him about games, he's like, yeah, you know, I played football and I enjoyed it. Truly, I was just another player. Before he was an Army colonel, Gary Steele was an Army tight end, excelling for three years as a starter. Although he never played in the NFL, he was drafted in the 17th round by the Detroit Lions and made one memorable play that will forever live in Army football lore. Cal was top-ranked team in the nation. My dad caught a long touchdown pass to beat him. Steele grabs it from one defender, skips out of the grasp of another, and scampers into the end zone. A 62-yard pass play. Army dramatically rallies to beat California 10-7. And I said, hey, Dad, why don't you ever tell me these things? And um, he said, what does that have to do with me being your father? Colonel and Mona Steele raised three children with the help of an old army adage. Do you know it? Do I know the cadet prayer? <laughs> My kids know the cadet prayer. <laughs> we all know, yes, Lord help me to choose the harder right, not the easier wrong, and to never tell a half truth when the whole can be one. And I think I got it exactly. I'm sure my dad will let me know. Make us choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong and never be content with a half truth when the whole can be one as long as I can remember that was in our lives. Something would happen in the house, Sage would blame me, I would blame Courtney, and my parents would call me in and, okay, what happened? Well, I, you know, I don't know. Chad, harder right, easier wrong. Okay, I broke the vase. Our first grader told her first lie in her first grade class. We had to have a whole long talk with her when she came on that night. We said, remember how the colonel always says, you know, harder right, easier wrong. Like it's, you, you, you won't get in trouble if you tell the truth. You got to choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. If you could give one defining trait for your family, what would it be? Integrity. It's just about being an honest person and being a good person. The cadet prayer is based on the fact that things get hard, and they did for Colonel and Mona right from the beginning. We ended up getting married at West Point. We were young and very naive. My parents um, pretty much disowned me and didn't come to the wedding or anything like that. Mom and dad won't talk to her because she married a black man. They were in Panama and she called her mom to say, I'm gonna have a baby and her mom hung up the phone. Because of my parents and all, I didn't count on other people. It was just, I knew I could count on Gary. There were many things that were said about what a relationship with a black husband would be and how you would end up being treated, etc. And so how are her parents going to know she's okay? 
So I believe it was once a once month. Once a month. And once a month, I would pen a letter. Here's where we are, here's what's going on, here's what we're doing together. Never received a return letter. They were always really nice letters. I mean, I questioned them every month. I'd say, I don't know why you're doing this. I, just, I do not know why you're doing this because you'll, they'll never write you or anything. And he'd say, they need to know you're okay. All right. It was the right thing to do. Yeah. It was to prove a point. You know, I am taking good care of this young woman. I am doing the right thing. When we finally did get together and I had the opportunity to meet her father, he says, Gary, in his voice, you know, he says, he says, Gary, I, I'd, I'd like to just forget this and move forward from here. And I guess there was a, a little bit of a burr under my saddle there. And, and, and I, I said to him, uh, I said, Duke, I said, I can never forget the last six years because I had to live this. But this is day one of our relationship, and we go forward from here. Being steel means being strong, especially when the battle is life and death. He is a prostate cancer survivor and is currently battling multiple myeloma. It's hard to see your hero, you know, hurting. He wanted to be the first person to ever give me flowers. So I turned 16 and roses were delivered to the door and it was my dad. He's my guy, still is, you know? I mean, no one takes the place of your dad, right? Oh. He's our rock. Everything that he's gone through, we all get together and he's thanking us for being there. They took out two vertebrae. C6 and C7. A tumor the size of a... A, a little bit bigger than a golf ball in yeah. the back. We won't show you the scars, although it's kind of cool. Let me know if you want to see them. It's like, I didn't know if I was going to make it to 71. I just want to be around you guys. I just want to live. Stand and lean the back of my legs. All right. It's following directions pretty well, huh, Chad? Yeah. Too bad he didn't shave very well. <laughs> We really try to deal with everything with a sense of humor, especially when it's this scary. I love to see my dad really living. All right. Congrats. Ooh. Yes. It was down to the last freaking second. <laughs> Colonel will always have his faith, his family, and Mona. My dad's the colonel, we call my mom the general. She does what needs to get done. The things that we don't see when he's home and he's struggling, she does and she picks him up when he needs it. My parents are amazing, amazing people. We have great examples to show how we should be as spouses and as parents.